day in life. Not what you would call an episode of the Trial by Error Variety Show. However, we are going to hear from the Shaky Harlots. That's super cool, right? Longtime friend of mine, Laramie Crow, and his soulmate, Bernadine. We are talking from the dope shop. That's right, the Dirty Dope Shop up in Medford, Oregon, where it's legal. I say that with a just a twinge of jealousy, only because there's still a criminal down here. There's still a criminal for partaking. And that's got to end, you guys, in 2019. At least it's got to end in 20. I'll give it another year, okay? I planted the seed, start changing some laws dickheads so tired of it anyway that started off on a weird note i'm just gonna leave it that way though because we jump around in this one for sure uh one of the coolest things about this episode is you get to hear five shaky harlot bits okay there's a full ep on Bandcamp. You can go to theshakyharlots.bandcamp.com and support these guys. I 100% recommend you doing that. And if you don't, then, like I said, you're a dickhead. So change the laws, buy the album, and you won't be a dickhead. Okay? Do something better yourself, all right? (laughs) Invest. Invest in something that's wholesome. Like the Shaky Harlots. It's just... What are you waiting for? This is uh, a song called LA's On Fire, and it is off of the new EP, Save It For Later. Give it up for the Shaky Harlots, and enjoy the show. California tonight are threatening 17,000 homes. That raging wildfire in California, California is a dust.
California tonight are threatened 17,000 homes. 17,000 homes. That raging wildfire in California. The death. I'm sure you have to see for like top of the I'm sure you need a sprite <laughs> brown m&ms laramie yeah all brown dude sorry i was reading this thing i guess like a bunch of famous edm artists are doing like a, a music festival in minecraft tonight Maybe like, like building stages and stuff yeah like, i guess they're doing like a like they're putting on there's gonna be like a digital music festival tonight wow. with like a famous edm artist and shit that is fucking cool is it dead mouse Mm. That'd be cool. It's all tan, everything. The white man can't even go outside to get a disease. We'll talk about how like white people can't even go outside into the sunlight without contracting a disease. Like the skin cancer. Got their SP5 3000. Nice. But they, uh... I think they only did one album and then broke up. Who is it? They're called Das Racist. You might have heard this one. The album's called Shut Up, Dude. <laughs> <laughs> nice, that's cool. So you know. Ask for one or two. They all look like Thomas. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> so true. Like all of his brothers made it. <laughs> <laughs> but they excluded Thomas. <laughs> Thomas can't join because his fur fucking vest is way too cool. We're on the air. On, we're live in Canada. Yeah, we're actually syndicated in 17 different Canadian cities. Nice. It's not true. What's up? Oh, you got dressed up for the podcast. That's cool. You didn't have to do that. I didn't get dressed up. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, I had to go get some ginger. All my stomach's like... Mm. Like that. Yeah, she was eating. That sounds like a, that's a loose sphincter. It's a tapeworm in my butt. Yeah, tapeworms, they come out eventually. <laughs> like, it's like ones in his butt. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the weight loss. Eat all you want. Yeah, every every fat person wants a tapeworm, but skinny people always get them, you know? Like, Dude, I remember me and my friend LeVon found this, like, weird, like, cassette, and it was, like, cowboy stories. And one of the things is, like, cow that already ain't. sounds weird. He's like, there ain't no such thing as a chubby cowboy because we all get tapeworms. Wow. <laughs> it's like, That's history good. and science. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, cowboy store. Oh, that's a customer. Don't, oh, ever, so. don't ever squat with your spurs on. That's another cowboy. Good afternoon, 
customer, so we have to take a quick break from the interview. Yeah, no, well, let's interview that guy. Wait, what are you, what are you looking for? An indica, sativa? <laughs> looking for some butters? Chad. <laughs> Let me sell him some shit. <laughs> we'll do all the sales by Skype. Like, it's all honor system here, bud. If you'll just leave the cash right under the computer with the rest of the cash. Uh, <laughs> Wow, that pineapple strand's real popular right now, huh? It's everywhere down yes, here. Yes, sir. We do. We're doing an interview for our band, and our friends just like smoking weed right now. Turn me around and let me see. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm like the prospector in the well, toy I story. Don't wanna, I don't want to intrude on anybody's, you know. Yeah, you don't want to infringe. No, I don't want to like we get sued over here. Well, we can bird box it. No, I mean, we are kind of bird boxing it. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that too. I, you know what? I, I fell asleep halfway through it, and I asked Stacy, "How'd it go?" And she's like, "It was really predictable." It was, yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I what I think is great uh, is the bird box challenge that people are doing now, driving their cars while blindfolded, trying to do the bird box challenge. That's awful. I saw Man. I saw one meme that was like, "Hold my Tide Pod," <laughs> and it was like that. <laughs> I love that. That's I'm thinking I'm gonna do that tonight. Yeah. No. Can I use your call? You may, Anything you, that's popular, I'm gonna wait like ten years later just to make sure. So we was. need to start planking now. No. <laughs> Dude, so did you see what Bird Box was supposedly about, though? Or based off of, or the idea from it? Nah. What is it? So it's supposed to be about mental illness. Like and suicide how we're, awareness. And how we're all just really blind to ever, like mental illness and stuff like that that's why they never showed the monsters yeah that was what that because that was the only thing i didn't like i was like how come they didn't show any like monsters monsters and then, and then mm -hmm. i saw post something about it and i was like i hope this is true because that like makes it actually yeah and that makes sense yeah that would make more sense than anything yeah it makes more sense to me too. i feel like I made it, it not so lame yeah it, yeah like, it, it, just <laughs> br it brought the film together in my eyes for me so it was like, yeah you were blind, but now you see. Yeah. It's I don't know if it's because I'm so bored or if I just real. I think I'm just so bored. I thought it was like a great movie. And then <laughs> like next day I was like, what the fuck? Like, why did I like that? If it is about that, that's like, I like it a lot because the fact that you're like, like, I feel like a lot of people are like, well, what the fuck was it killing everyone? Yeah. And that like, that like sentence right there is like. Like a demon or whatever. Yeah. That sentence right there is like, is like awesome because you're just blind to it maybe i'm getting too deep maybe i'm giving them too much credit right now but if she <laughs> ended like, up at a school for the blind what does what is a school for the blind in terms is that society is that a small niche of society that's awake that can see yeah okay that can see through without seeing yeah. and they can see without even having to see because they're just like super smart or what that's like us guys because we're not ignorant yeah. <laughs> we're the we're, blind people. We're a bunch yeah. of dared. Yeah. All right. Break time. <laughs>
reason, I feel. I feel like I may have caused mental illness in a few, like, past ex-girlfriends. Oh, possibly. Dude. I'm better now. That's why I sealed the deal with this one, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> We've all played with the, the devil a little bit, but we're good people. Hey, at least you weren't blind to it. At least you knew. Well. We thought we were the blind people. No. Just... Willing denial. Willing denial. Yeah, yeah. Like, I knew what was waiting on the other side of those hard choices. But you know what I learned through many hours of therapy is you you gain strength, like spiritual strength, by going headlong into like the most challenging situations. It's by being honest about yourself, like in the moment, acknowledging like, no, I'm not cool with this right now. Like, this does this is doesn't doesn't make me happy or healthy. It's like you know what I mean? Like yeah. I fucked up and I like fell on my ass and now I it's like the craziest things make you a better person and yeah. grow. Like, the things you would think would make you grow don't. Yeah. It's hard to explain, but, yeah, falling on my ass, like, made me finally not have severe PTSD. Like, I was, like, it took, like, going down on drugs, like, that far to, like, finally bring myself back up to a normal person. It's really yeah. weird. Yeah. It's well, it's, it is true. I mean, once you, you get to that point, you remember, like, oh, fuck, I didn't always feel this bad. Like, this is my own fault, you know? Yeah. yeah, that was how I felt landing in prison. <laughs> I, I had nobody to blame but myself. Like I'm going in there, I'm like, oh, that, because I got set up, you know, and I blame them, and you know, but ultimately, like every choice that led to that was me, and right. you know, I led myself to that snare. It wasn't like somebody helicoptered me off into the woods and then I fell into a trap. Like you know what I mean? Like I every step I took on my own. And uh, but while I was in there, uh, you know, people look at it as such a negative thing, like, oh, my God, prison must have been so hard. And like, dude, yeah, it is. But so is boot camp. So is like uh, college, like, you know, like situations and, you know, where you don't have to focus where you can't really focus on like yourself, your ego. You have to focus on what you're supposed to be learning. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's what that was what rock bottom was for me, and that's when I realized like I can do better. Like I can do better than this. I stayed out of jail for how long? You know, like I. But, but it's a uh, it's tricky, you know. Once you get to that point where you realize it, because then you know that's where the hard part comes. Like now you got to fucking start yeah. making steps. Yeah, I know I can have like ten babies now for sure. <laughs> nice, nice. That's what Funny. happens. Yeah. It's it, like you said, it could be something totally different for other people going yeah. through the same, same exact thing. It could seem like not as intense, but it's like someone having like crazy mental illness could be the same as being a heroin addict or whatever, yeah. whatever you're going through. Yeah, or you can have candy addiction or porn addiction. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I feel like you're really speaking to the choir right now. I... <laughs> 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 How's your phone, Chaz? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> that was research uh, from another podcast. I, You're a smarter man now. You got to see. I some know what I know what a ball hog is. Thank you, Christina <laughs> P. and Tom Segura. He's <laughs> all nervous now and red. I'm not nervous. Hey, look, here's the thing. I'll be real about you. I'll be real about this. I don't like ball stuff. Like ball stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not a turn on for me. That's like a really tender spot. No balls. What? Cut the balls. Yeah, it is. That's like, I mean, I'm, look, I'm at, thing. I know, I know like, 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 I'm saying porn wise, like ball porn. That's not a thing for me. Um, like balls? Like ball hogs in particular. The thing that you happen to have just Bro. so happened to pick my phone up while I was <laughs> researching, researching. <laughs> conversation for being nauseous. This conversation made you nauseous? No, I said it's the perfect conversation for being nauseous. Oh, okay, right? good. Yeah. I was like, man, I'm like... I'm feeling better. The ginger all went in. Yeah. Happened. That's good. Oh, it's a dog toy for a uh, pee. I bought a dog toy for my daughter tonight. You nice. did? Yeah, we're training her like a dog, so I figure... Might as well. Yeah. She takes commands very well, and she kennels at night. <laughs> <laughs> she actually does though she's like i want to sleep here as a like, I don't you gotta get one of those clickers so when they're doing something bad you're just like <laughs> yeah shot I caller ah. <laughs> i uh but you know what i realized though you guys like it is never appropriate to kindle a baby like no matter 
if you not, have food and water in the kennel. Dude, back in the day in New York, they yeah. had those cages that they put outside the apartments. That the that, window. That was the only time it's open. Yeah. Why would they do that? Uh, it's when there was a nice day outside. They would. Uh, they would just fry the baby. No, they let <laughs> some air. Yeah, the baby's like got mosquitoes and crap like yeah, all in there. Yeah, got gerbil like water thing in there. He's like. <laughs> Little toddler on a wheel. Or, like a baby you know, cage. Or when no. you were just tired of. You know, dealing with the kid, you just throw it out in the bird box. Ooh, uh-huh. going back. Ooh. Wow. wow. Yeah, the... Uh... When this started, <laughs> you reached the bird box. That would be a great painting, though. It's just like <laughs> the, the cityscape of New York with a bunch of babies and, like, hamster wheel cages, like, with little hamster... Like, New York, like, like the... <laughs> Like oh in the God. 50s, like 50s cars and stuff, and then everything's normal, except in the windows, babies are like on hamster <laughs> wheels with like little like jugs they drink from, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta paint that shit, dude. You I'll gotta try. get too. I'll try to b- manifest it. Make a huge wall canvas of it, too. So <laughs> yeah. It's like a big article. There's yeah. like one cat that's like a teenager now. It's like too big for the cage. <laughs> oh. Or there's like two kids in the cage, like two little fat I- kids, so it's like shoved in one cage. The fat like all mushing babies. out of it would be great. All the babies put their moms in there. Yeah. It's getting creepy now. Yeah. Let's stop talking about those. Ooh, I got it. I got it. Binoculars? Is that what those are called? So you have like you have two versions of this painting. You have the daytime version when it's a beautiful day. You've got the babies in the cage. <laughs> and then the nighttime version, which is like mom and dad in the cage, like totally oh. fucking like mushed up together and like <laughs> And babies run in the house at night, you know? An ashtray on top of the cage. Yeah, seriously, like a dad just like trying to, like with a typewriter in his lap, trying to write all the like, and cramped up in the cage. Like, beautiful night for the write. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. No needed balconies in the 40s. They yeah. need to do comedic painting. I think that's the thing. Comedic yeah. painting? There's got to be a thing. There is a... Uh, the, that uh, one, dude. Yeah, the, with, he does the guy in the tree all the time. Like, yeah. He does stuff in the tree. <laughs> what is that guy? He's done some good stuff. Uh, I, I always forget his name. I have, like, a cutout of him on my, one of my guitar. One of the things yeah. he did, like, the dude holding the selfie stick with the gun yes, on it. I like, saw that one. Yeah. Then uh, the he, Yeah, he also did, like, the, uh, kind of like in Fight Club, you know, how they, like, redo the, like, plane, plane manuals or whatever, like, the yeah. crap. Yes. He, like, made, like, a funny one of that one. Yeah. So, He's, uh, I saw it on High Fructose, the magazine or whatever. That's I, where I found out about him. I've been following him on my Instagram for a long time. And I've seen it. It's like Sir, Sir John or something like that on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. This He's girl good, man. like uh, black women in paintings instead of Jesus and stuff like in the original paintings. <laughs> Pretty intense. Like, like the chariot painting and like all the crazy like really Mona Lisa all the crazy yeah they're all she puts like a beautiful black woman in instead she like that's paints cool. over it kind of yeah. weird that's interesting there's some black today yeah. there's this there's you this should one, look it up it's a trip it's a trip there's this one artist who uh covers the naked bodies in honey like like deep in honey they're like thick they're just like people just, covered like, in honey just pours like it's really huge cool looking honey on them on their face i don't know if stuff. i'd want to hang out with that guy though and it's pretty cool looking too surprisingly it's a serial killer you know, you're like honey yeah. that's a, like that art art artsy but when yeah. it's on a naked body it is artsy he jerks off to some weird stuff i bet oh okay. god he's probably got a big bumblebee suit in his bed or something <laughs> he's the He's the guy that you see the fruit born for. You know what I mean? It's like gr- girl with eggplant. You're like that's that like, guy. In her legs, she's like. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That daddy. <laughs> All right. Are we supposed to be talking about music or one something? One time, one time I saw a girl put a cucumber up there and it came out a pickle. <laughs> oh. oh. I didn't really. Don't, don't go swimming. <laughs> I believed it. My brother told me I believed it. I'm gullible. My brother told me my whole life that Japanese Chinese women's vaginas were sideways. Wow. He's like, oh, they're like, and I believed him. Wow. Is it because because they were blurry and nobody could tell? I don't know. <laughs> but really, what would be the difference from this way?
way to this way. Not really that much. Well, the think joke, about it. it's kind of a, a cheesy joke, but with the joke, like, I remember, because I, when, I, when I, like, was a framer, everyone's a pervert, so it's, like, constantly everyone's making stupid jokes. But I heard, I swear, growing up, I heard that joke way too many times, so it was just like, this is boring. That's how gullible I am, though, even but as it, a teenager, I believe It was, like, that. it was saying, like, if they spread their legs, it, like, closes more, so it gets tighter. Yeah, that that's a cool trick. That's a cool <laughs> trick. Speaking of, this song is called Fuck Fuel. <laughs> Trying to get all the children to stop listening with this episode. <laughs> Did it for the kids. Yeah. Not, no. Not for kids. I don't know how to say that. Stacy no. burst my bubble today. She's like, I said, you know, I'd like to start including more topical stuff on there and, you know, just go real deep with it and, you know, go away. Like, I know I, sometimes it's like a kid show and she's like, well, you said it's a kid show, but it's not. Like, I've never thought it was a kid show. <laughs> and it, we kind of got in an argument like, about that because <laughs> yeah. I mean it's, I never really said it was a kid show I just said it was like family friendly but then I think about it it's not really like we talk about some pretty even with some of the people I don't know we talk about some pretty weird stuff so, <laughs> I don't know it's all advisory or I don't want to do that though I don't want to have a disclaimer I feel like kids should just stumble upon it organically and if, if it's like that naughty just don't tell your parents about it kids that's all i'm yeah. saying just don't don't tell them that you listen and that's cool sacrifice i'll sacrifice one subscriber so that you can learn shit about the world you know like that's all i'm trying to do here is pass on wisdom you know? but when you're 18 you better fucking su subscribe dude yeah yeah i mean your parents even though the, even though they may be subscribers they don't they don't they're, nobody's on my patreon so i don't care they don't support me. <laughs> they got kids, nothing. I owe them nothing. <laughs> kids these days, it is a kid show, you know? It's like kids these days are like, they should know about more more things than, than we used to. I mean, it's like, there's a lot of crazy shit out there. I think it's better to know than not know. Shit. Yeah. Seems like you can, though. Like, the idea of kids having, like, smartphones now is pretty trippy to me. 
But my it's kids like a- watch Rick and Morty and Family Guy. Like, they know what's going on. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to be very liberal about what, like, life is for them because I feel like they have plenty of structure surrounding, like, the things that we do. I mean, we have a, a pretty regimented life, even though we do a bunch of shit. It's like... They still know they have to go to school. They still know they have a bedtime. They still, I mean, you know what I mean? They're pretty responsible in that regard. And, right. And so the rest of it, I'm like, if they learn about sex or whatever, like, I want them to ask me questions. I don't want them to just uh, hear it from a friend and, and not know what the hell's going on. Because they do pass misinformation on all the time. Uh, yeah. And it's so funny when they bring it up, you know, because I don't mind talking about it very honestly. Um, but I don't talk about it in a sexy way. It's not like that. Um, you know, but... They don't Try to make it, you normalize it. Exactly. Very normalized. Yeah. Like, it's just a part of human nature, but it's not even a thing that kids worry about. So I tell them, like, all that stuff is just adult stuff. Like, adults write that show. It's for adults just because you watch it, you know. And they're just like, oh, man. And then they just move on with, oh, remember when that alien farted and it, like in the spaceship? And I'm like, yeah, exactly. That's the kind of <laughs> stuff that sticks with you. <laughs> but they're just trying to figure it out. They don't really care. They're not so interested in it until you're like, no, don't talk about that. Don't talk about yeah. it. I don't want to hear it. I always it. loved when, like, kid cartoons would, like, our kid movies throw in, like, adult, like, like a few adult jokes for, like, the adults in the movies, you know? Yeah. I always love that because it's, like you said, it just goes over the kids' heads. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's, like, the adults are, like, <laughs> I think it's when you're making a big deal out of you know, anything bad. That's when kids are, like, oh, I want to do it more. I don't know. I feel like if you normalize it, like you say, it's not as, not as like, tempting. It's a really weird balance. So, like, if I had kids, I wanted to make sh- I want to make sure like they know like about everything, so that they know what not to do and make a you know you just hope they make a good choice. It's just hard to it's hard to like know what your kid's gonna do in that situation. But you, all you can do is try your best. Yeah, exactly. You know, and like I said, just always want to keep that channel open. So, I mean, if even if I know they're gonna make tons of horrible mistakes that are gonna like break them in a lot of ways, but I feel like. You know, my parents set a really good example. Yeah, I don't feel like my parents were really approachable in person, but I could always, like, write them a note and tell them my dad would write me back. You know, like, there was always an open line of communication, so. Right. Um, but my kids, like, right now, my the trouble I'm having with them is they lie about everything. It's like they're at that stage where it's like, oh, I'll just throw this guy under the bus and it'll be cool, you know? <laughs> and, like, we've all don't been there, down, but. Dude. Yeah. You're like, you're going to get caught. Yeah. I'm like, we all know you did it, and you just blame them. So, like, three bad things just happen. You know? <laughs> when one could have happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or so, none. So. <laughs> you could have just told the truth. <laughs> I look at those little tiny things, and I'm like, yeah, you're going to make some really big mistakes. But don't worry, I'm going to be here. <laughs> so. But like we were talking about earlier, those fucking, the mistakes are, like, one of the biggest things to learn from, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, if, like, you were just, like, had the most perfect life your whole life... You wouldn't learn anything. You'd be a pretty boring person. I don't know anybody like that. I don't either. Yeah, that's so... That's something a kid would think of, you know? Like, a kid would be, like, thinking somebody out there had a better life. Like, oh, man, adults know we're all slaves. I thought about that (laughs) recently, and I was thinking, like, even, like... I have random thoughts, but I was thinking even, like, really spoiled, rotten, rich kids. Like, everybody has horrible horrific crazy things that happen in their life there isn't one person that just has a bland perfect normal life like every everybody goes through something yeah if you're you're rich and you wake up and you like go to go you need to go to the kitchen but it's like you know 500 feet away and so you get on your hoverboard and the battery you didn't charge the battery the night before you're like ah i gotta walk to breakfast (laughs) I knew I already had Rita, started. I already, had started juice. I already started to laugh right when, when you started talking about the rich kid's life. I knew you were gonna make a joke. <laughs> I need to grind up this gold and put it in my oatmeal. Yeah, yeah. Where's where's the maid to make my cereal? She called in today? Son of a bitch. Off with her head. <laughs> she got deported? God. We all have problems. That's what I'm trying to say, guys. <laughs> I do believe it is time for another Shaky Harlot song. This one is Breakdown. I'm not good at telling people things.
Yeah, I know. It's kind of funny how yeah, we, I like, know. screw... How, like, all these people who are like, Land of the free! Come here, you can uh, have the American dream! And all those people who are trying, to, mar- mar- were trying to market that so they could, like, make money off of it. And now they're like, oh, shit! All yeah. these people are trying to come to America! Now there's all these posters up about how bad people are being mistreated. It's crazy. There's posters everywhere. Like, are you basically a slave in our country? Yeah. Cl- cleaning houses and restaurants and shit, not getting paid right and being abused. Uh, and having Sex- to isolate yourself. Yeah. yeah, it's horrible. Shit, yesterday I was walking around and there was a uh, Spanish lady. She, like, approached me. She was, like, limping in a Burger King thing. And she's like, can I use your phone? And I was like, yeah, yeah, what's up? And she was like, I just got fired because she got hurt at Burger King. So they she, fired her. And she was like, my shoulder hurts really bad. Like, she was like, I think I need to go to the doctor. And, and like, they were like, no, keep cooking. And she was like, no, like, my shoulder hurts. And they were like, fuck you, get out of here, she said, and just fired her. I was like, she's what? like, you think I, that they could, I could sue them? And he's like, yeah, probably, but I don't feel like talking to you right now because yeah. he was having a bad day. I was like, yeah, you totally <laughs> consumed. Don't worry. I was like, but I got to go. <laughs> he's like, here's some advice. I got to fucking go. I'm having a bad day. I didn't give her advice. She just asked. I let her use my phone call. Call, yeah. her, that was nice. call her son. That was nice. She's in the middle of a lawsuit right now. I feel it. I feel it. She's gonna be. She's gonna have like a Mexican Burger King. She's Dude. gonna take take it to the next level. Guacamole burgers. I don't know. It can get pretty weird. King Holy Hamburguesa. <laughs> <laughs> El Polo Burgers. Or is it just Burgesa? Burgesa. Yeah. I. You know what I got tonight, guys? Uh, horchata and. Coconut ice cream. Oh nice. man, that sounds amazing. It's kind of counterproductive, though. Man. Well, I'm here's what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> I'm gonna scoop two scoops into a Mexican Coke, and that's how I'm gonna have it. Overloading. I am jealous. jealous. That's like a root beer from hell, like <laughs> root beer float from hell, like a yeah. good hell. I might even put it in a wine yeah. glass. Hot root beer or er, coconut hortata Coca Cola float. Yeah. That's Coco, Poor Ho, Flow Flow. I'm so fancy. What's your Coco Cola? Dude, I want to, w- have you seen that, the documentary about the sugar? Mm-mm. Yeah, we look, haven't seen that. It looked pretty good. I haven't seen it either. We should, <laughs> we should watch the sugar doc. Yeah, yeah. Documentary, guys. I almost bought a sugar cane tonight. No, Stacey's was... talked me into it, but I, I put it down because I'm like, what am I going to do with a sugar cane? You know? She want it, dude. That's that's what she said. No. Your new name your new sure. name is Sugar Dude. I don't know. Sugar 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 Chaz. Oh, there's a customer. Yep. One second guys. Sugar Chaz. <laughs> like your radio. It's name. like my AOL screen name or something. Sugar Chaz sixty nine. At AOL. I can help you. I'm gonna... <laughs> Dude, so we just, we just ran out. Seriously? Yeah, they might have them at the other shop on Main. If you want, I can call them real quick. Um, yeah, we have the keychain one for a while, but I guess the owner didn't like them because uh, you could change the temperature on it. So it's like waking up the phone. Like, uh, ghost training things. Sure, ghost training days. Have a good day. Not really. Man, I'm sorry. Me neither. Me neither. <laughs> My day was not good. Do you want to say say hi to Stacy? Oh, you have a words number, don't you? Uh, 1060. So I'm gonna be checking out of stressing out of me. Yeah, it's been, it's been crazy. And I'm a contractor, so I don't get the back pay on like the uh, feds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dusting <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're doing a doing like a band interview right now, randomly. Enough. Yeah, we're doing a band interview. 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 Yeah, we're doing a I'm just gonna dust stuff. Yeah, look busy. And you need a receipt? 
weird girl dusting. Bye. This is our maid. I was about to say fuck the government, but I didn't say anything. <laughs> not, not in my job. I know. I'm being good. I mean, we're being good. Yeah. Uh, I always feel bad for that people. That guy was upset, and I, he said he hated that the government was shut down right now or something. And I was about to say fuck the government to make him feel better, but then I was like, Brenna, shut up. I have to, like, tell my brain. Doesn't the government, like, shut down, like, once a year? Yeah, or twice, or three. How many times has the government... This is, I think, the second time I know of. Yeah, it did uh, when Obama was around, and then, yeah. This is the longest one in history, whatever. So it's still shut down. Yeah. So, yeah, when there was, like, an earthquake, I was trying to look it up, and it was scary. Because even though it wasn't here, it was, like... I think it was in Alaska or something, but, like, it hit the Oregon coast a little bit. And I knew, anyway, I was reading about it in the news or whatever. So I went online to look it up. And all the websites, like, if you needed to look up something in, in like, a really serious emergency-type situation are all shut down. All the government websites? Yeah, they're all wow. out of date. So, like, if you need to get online and see where you need to do, like, an escape route or anything, it's – there's nothing – to help yeah. you. That's yeah. what's all the parks are closed, everything. It's nuts. That's scary, man. There's gonna be a lot of dog shit. <laughs> yeah, and no payouts on those uh those W twos. Oh really? Mm -hmm. The first year I'm thinking of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, of course the first year it happens. Yeah. You can't do anything. I waited my whole damn life to file my taxes, and the government shut down, and I didn't get shit. Isn't it uh -huh. ironic? <laughs> I don't know why I have a song. What's the song? Take a look at my girlfriend. She's the, the only, only one, one I got. Take a da 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 Stripstream? What is that weird name? Stripstream. <laughs> no, it's a, it's something kids, I think. Hmm. I don't like no, that. Because people grow up, you know? I don't like it. <laughs> Can't be like new kids on the block forever, you know? Or like... Tramp. So, super Tramp. It's not Super Tramp, is it? No. Take a look at my girlfriend. No, Super Tramp? No, they're like, right, right. You bloody well right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to talk about music, but if you guys want to talk about music, you're more than happy. I'd be more than more than welcome to. I don't know. I'm kind of tired of music right now. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I'm, I feel too. Like I'm going to splice your music in here, but we don't have to talk right. about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm tired, man. We've been playing so much, and like, yeah. what? No, like our lives are music. So mm -hmm. I would love to talk about it when maybe we're not doing so much of it. Or well, that's the whole when point. you have to, like, you know, when you're promoting it specifically. Like, if something's really happening, and we I need mean, you to, guys like, do like, have a well, new EP out. We do. Too. And shout out to Possum Pete Records for helping us out so much. Oh yeah, Possum Pete. They signed us to their awesome label in Philadelphia, and. That is the only music shout out I want to do right now. Is it Philadelphia? Penn State? It's Penn State and Philadelphia. It's Pennsylvania, right? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so don't listen to what I just said. <laughs> Wait a Penn, minute. Penn State is where possum, Penn Possum, PP. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Possum P. No, th those people are pretty tight. They, they kind of showed me, like, I don't know, like, I would eventually like to do something like that, too, you know? Yeah. Like, we're starting to grow possum feet. My feet are all like hairy and prickly, and they're like, <laughs> Yeah, save them toes, though. <laughs> Put some uh, wax on them toes. Save them toes. Do that yeah. wax. Yeah, if I ever have, like, <laughs> cool. if I ever, ever have <laughs> money late. to like do stuff for bands I like, I'm <laughs> definitely going to start like a little DIY label. Yeah. Because I'm 
the the whole we like start our own like record company, but like you know for fun. See, that's the the like the like them. It's just two like college chicks. Yeah, girls, females, women, women. College <laughs> in the 90s. Um, These two college <laughs> chicks run this record label, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He does talk like a surfer. That's what I love. That's why I love him so much. Uh, He's like, man, let's go catch some fucking boy. Shut up, you know. When we, when we get to the bed, babe, I want you to like, scare up. And then like, I don't know what that is. Grind up on my gnar stick. I sleep upside down like a bat. So I don't yeah. even sleep in the bed. I'm on the wall upside down. She's usually hovering over me. Yeah, like Zool. <laughs> There is no Dana. There is only Zua. <laughs> and Laramie sleeps. Laramie sleeps in a, a deprivation tank all night. Nice. Hey, I we don't just... really sleep together. I sleep on the wall. He sleeps in the tank, and we get along great in the day. She thinks. She thinks I'm in the tank. Yeah. He's got a blow up doll in there. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this bitch? Yeah, I I tried one of the new robot dolls, but it just wasn't the same. I like the oh I like God. the blow up. You know, I like the whole body to be a little squishy. Kids, don't do drugs. <laughs> don't smoke weed. Uh, but yes, if I ever had money to spend, I would love to do something like that. To where you like just find artists you like, and like, cause now you know you have to like pay for like a distro kid and shit like that to get your music out or like. Or CD baby, you know, to like get get on certain platforms, or it's just the least like what most people do. Yeah. So it'd essentially, be cool to be like a, because I notice with DistroKid you can have like a label account, to where you just like do it. So it'd be so tight to actually find that and find bands that like don't have money, you know, but that. that are like really amazing. Because capital just, is what stands in the way for most yeah. bands. Dude, because it, it really bums me out. I've noticed that, like, a lot of bands I see that are, like, huge now are just really wealthy kids. And it's kind of just, like, disturbing. We know these we know these, these dudes. I'm not going to say their name because they get mad when I even just ask them about it. But my friend plays with them, and he is, like, tell me about them. And they're just going to pay. They're just going to give somebody $5,000. To like start getting them like shows and shit, and I'm like like normal shit. Yeah, I'm like, dude, why don't you like I don't, like why don't you just like email someone? Yeah, it just and makes like you think. and the and like the fact that like these kids, they're these dudes have like they can afford probably to do anything. Like I could see them like being able to like get it big, and like that kind of like makes me sick. Yeah, because all, that's really all it is, man. It's the way you promote yourself, and promotion is all about money. And if you have endless amounts of it, you can just hire somebody to make you look as as you know way better than you could ever make yourself look. So I could go see one of these famous new acts or bands, and like it's a sold out show, but then you kind of go home and wonder fucking why, and then yes. you it's that it's a huge fucking illusion. Yeah. You're yourself you tricked for a minute you're like love this band and then you're like wait a minute why do i love this band it's like brainwashing i would say that's the thing that kills me about the, the music scene like especially nowadays with like the fake. digital the digital era now it's like unheard of the only fucking band i feel like that has that is because i hate this band the greta, Gre van, the greta van, van fleet or whatever which they're just i'm almost positive they're just like really wealthy kids you know mm -hmm. But they're they're like good. They sound like Led Zeppelin. It's just yeah. Uh, it's like, just like how did but, so they get they just got signed. You know, it's like one of those things where like they're back huge. in the like back in the nineties and stuff. It's like they would find unknown bands and just sign them and then like start like I feel like stuff like that doesn't ha happen anymore. No. Mm -mm. And that's like how that's like how people who like couldn't afford to like get notice got noticed. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's like gave a chance for people who were like who were still like working all the time while they're still trying to write music now it's yeah. like all these people are famous rich and it's like all these people are running the world that are just yeah. and, <laughs> that's it I, it's the rich people <laughs> even in the music scene like i've noticed but we like, love tame impala yeah <laughs> <That's right. laughs> tame impala like, is awesome okay you guys last shaky harlots track of this little episode here this is heartbeats i'm gonna ask you one more time after this one more time to go to bandcamp 
Facebook.com and find this album. Pay for it. Show some love. It's super awesome. You'll definitely want it in your collection before the LP comes out because they're guaranteed to be uh, different versions. You know? It's ground floor shit right here, you guys. You're welcome. Heartbeats. Here it is. There were miserable shits. No art worth a damn was ever created out of happiness, I can tell you that much. Ambition, narcissism, sex, rage, those are the engines that drive every great artist, every great man. A hole that can't be filled. That's why we're all such miserable asshole. So you know you're a miserable asshole. We think I'm an idiot. Of course I know.
don't know. I hate people with money. <laughs> uh, so I become someone's money, I'll probably be. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's like shows we want to see and things we want to do. And of course, we would love a man and, you know, all this stuff. But it's like, we're just working our asses off. Like, we don't, I mean, we have money. We just don't have we don't. Money. We don't have money. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I have like. like I didn't have we feel like we get to see our money. And we're like, oh, this is beautiful. We made this. And then yeah. It's just gone. <laughs> yeah, we don't have money. That's what I'm talking about. I just pretend I do, so I just keep smiling. Well, you become what you hate eventually. So I wish the best for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna be like the most, the most famous rich. And <laughs> thanks, Chaz. You just totally uh, fucking jinxed us. Like, remember when? Remember when we used to be well, able to talk? Find a day, I'll be like, yo, dude, I got this bidet. And it's like sparkling gold. Bye. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, don't put that there. It has a GoPro. How come we don't even <laughs> talk no more? <laughs> <laughs> we don't keep touch I'm at all. He's like, things you hate. So good luck, you guys. God damn it. Uh, I can say Chaz is amazing he's a great guy and he's fucking funny for sure me who are you I'm talking about right i'm talking about <laughs> sugar chat sugar sugar shout out for sugar chat hi sugar welcome chip. to kzxp with sugar chaz <laughs> uh, your 10 o'clock back to I, back rock stack hit them back jack flap when i was five to nine years old i did radio interviews all the time on my cassettes mm -hmm. like i would record them and pretend i was 10 different people and stuff True story. And play songs that I recorded on the radio and then replay them like I was playing. What were you going to say about KEXP? KEXP, two days ago, a really good band went on there, uh, the Dilly Dally. They're just called Dilly Dally. Mm -hmm. But uh, you Marijuana check it out. Marijuana yeah. makes me still. She has like awesome white wig. And, like, no, that's her hair color. So she, that's what? A, yeah, that's I was, they did like an article, I guess, and uh, it's not a wig. She no, actually she dyed her she hair. Dyed her hair it's white. Part of a part of Whoa, creative process. Your hair is like the same color that just happened. Are you the girl? Are you the lead singer for Dilly Dilly? <laughs> what the fuck? Surprise. You'll have the same nose too. I, I cross uh, I cross dress and I go by Dilly Dally. Dude, what a trip. We're both like, we both looked at each other like, dude. No, I saw it the other day. I was complimented. Yeah. It looks good. Some days I puff it up. Not today. So how is live music in that area? Is there like rock and roll shows? No. Like no punk shows and shit? No. Only, and you're in only when you're we were doing it. <laughs> you're, you're in Bandera, right? Mm. Yeah. We gotta go fuck that town up. Yeah, I know. I try every now and then. I wonder what, what do you think would happen if like a rock and roll band played there? Do you think people would like it, or would they be like, "God damn it, this isn't George"? Yeah, I think they would act like it's a big deal, like as far as negative thing. But then, like the next day, nobody would give a shit. You know, like that's wow. that's how I think it is here. Like people are just they're they're bird boxing, you know. Everybody's bird boxing. I think I just. I think somebody just farted, and it was me. <laughs> I was, like, trying to hide it this, in this, this little this office you chair. Cut, this is where you cut in the dilly dally. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, she was a kid. Uh, crop dusted. <laughs> uh, I was trying room. to, like, keep it in the chair, but... Uh -huh. And that concludes our interview. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I knew. I gotta go, you guys, so... <laughs> well? Well, shit, you guys. Sorry I farted and ended yeah, yeah, I just made everything. <laughs> kind of after that, everybody's like, I guess I just fart when I want things to end. <laughs> everybody thinks I'm cool and pretty, but I'm just like a weird farting nerd girl. Yeah, you just clear the room out. I did. I'm a stinky guy. Actually, yeah. I'm a stinky girl. That's Laramie's, he always told me he wanted He always to... likes the stinky one. <laughs> yeah, he said if he didn't get a girl that was like a guy, he would... <laughs> this is true. This is very, very true. Yeah, he was just like, I can't do regular. I can't do normal. I gotta have it all. I'm glad <laughs> I'm not a guy or we would have had a couple fights already. Like this. <laughs> Alright, well, I love you guys. Love you too. Love you too, man. We will talk soon. Bye! Peace out. Later.
All right. See, told you. We hopped around. Just as promised. And one more time, as promised, go to the shakyharlots.bandcamp.com, buy the EP, save it for later, put it in your wish list, save it for later. (laughs) If I sound redundant, those are two different statements, all right? Pick it apart. Speaking of pick it apart, we have a new segment on this show. It is Q&A, except we're going to shine light on some really important questions for some really obscure Amazon products. And here to read some of those questions and responses is my lovely soulmate, Stacy. Okay. All right, so so what are we looking at here? We're looking at the piggyback rider. Okay. This this came about <laughs> I was searching for stand-up strollers. And this popped up, and I just thought, man, this has got to be... Wait a minute. You were searching for a stand-up stroller? <laughs> like, a, like a book cart? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's an option of them sitting. But then there's okay. an option they can stand in the back of it. Because you know, our little crazy gremlin likes to stand up, but so, not uh, walk uh, fast. You just need like a dolly, like something like for Hannibal Lecter. Yes. You know? Yes, but those usually don't come with the right, you know... You can't go off roading. <laughs> but this piggyback rider, it looks like whoever's riding it is making you their bitch. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? So anyway, I see this picture, which if you have to look it up and you'll see it, and you just think like, oh, the comments on that have to be gold. It just, it didn't disappoint. It. Customer questions. Okay. There it is. There it is. We'll go to all of them. <laughs> Let's see. Will this product allow enough clearance for the passenger to vomit down my shirt and urinate all over my back? <laughs> <laughs> Highly unlikely. However, you should be safe with explosive diarrhea. (laughs) I like the guy underneath says, this is a hypothetical. (laughs) (laughs) Let's see. There's so many good ones. Oh, does this work well on a motorcycle, including highway speeds? (laughs) Yes, but the child and yourself should be wearing helmets. Safety first. (laughs) Like as you scroll down, though, <laughs> this guy's going. Um, I hope you were joking. This is to help carry children without straining your back. Yeah, there's always not those... appropriate for using on a motorcycle. <laughs> so serious, people. <laughs> Look at the guy before though. Optimal speed is 88 miles per hour. Just make sure you have 1.21 gigawatts of power in your motorcycle. I take my kids on mine. I have two kids. One three and one one and a half. I put the three-year-old on my back and the one-year-old on his. It seems to be pretty stable if you keep it under 65. I like I like the balance of, you know, trolling and reality. Like, people that come in and just crush it with, like, no, you can't do that. Like, yeah. That's for the people that look at this and they're like, oh, that's not funny. That's Someone's really asking, you know. Yeah. It's got to be that way. There's two types of people. That, there's There's trolls and then there's people who care. You know? <laughs> oh, here's one for you, babe. <laughs> Thinking about buying this for Bonnaroo, <laughs> do you think this could hold someone who's about five foot seven and weighs 120 pounds asking for a friend? <laughs> uh, yes, but only if you want to run Barter Town, which you have to be pretty a pretty ambitious team to pull it off. If you're not 100% on top of your game, the Road Warrior will take you, the two of you out. <laughs> no, it will not hold that weight. Somebody has to throw that in there. <laughs> All right, what else? What else? We got time for one more. Uh, oh, there's so many. Uh, this, I mean, could could my 115 pound wife fit? If your kid pulls your hair, how well does this backpack withstand a body slam? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> Depends how hard you slam them. However, if your kid pulls your hair, they are tough enough to withstand the body slam. And then there's one that says, "My kid is uh, overweight." <laughs> Parentheses fat. <laughs> what do I do? And they go, "Leave him at home." <laughs> Thank you for taking your time to review products uh, so I understand what I'm getting myself into because I honestly was thinking about getting one for Utopia Fest. So uh, Yeah, it, I mean, it's just fun when these things happen and yeah. you're not expecting it. Yeah. Thanks, Dace. <laughs> you're welcome. Okay, I hope everybody enjoyed that. I know I did. I feel better. I feel better about everything. It's been a great week. I'm starting a new job, which, you know, is going to change my life a little. And I'm doing it because I want to learn more. I want to get better. And I hope that everybody out there is is on the same 
mindset this year that they're going to get better this year. We should all we should all think that way, right? Don't agree with me cuz I'm asking you. But just planting seeds, man. Just planting them. I would like to thank the Shaky Harlots for sitting down and chatting with me. I would like to thank my wife for putting up with me. My madness, my tirades, because I'm a maniac. <laughs> also, you guys, something that is near and dear to my heart is the Utopia Fest. And right now, it really, really needs our help. Next week, I plan on contributing $100. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but literally anything helps so i'm gonna i'm gonna put a hundred dollars into the fundly page it is viva utopia so if you guys go to fundly.com and type in utopia fest you will definitely find our campaign out there we're trying to raise a ton of money for a lot of um you know a lot of the the bills need to get paid to keep the lights on as well as the planning for next year it's just a few months away it seems like uh, November's a long time away, but we're almost done with January. So we got a lot of planning to do, and, and the more people that are on board now is really going to help us put this thing together for next year. So go check that out. Um, I will put the link in the show notes so you can just click right to it. And if you follow me on social media, follow Chasnick Rab or Trial by Error, you're definitely going to find some links on there, uh, ways to contribute. I also have a My Viva Utopia video posted on our Instagram, kind of explaining the overall encompassing feeling. And if you guys want to win some tickets, go contribute one yourself. You have till the end of this month. Yeah, that's right, January 30th, and the contest is over. You can literally win two tickets to every event that Utopia Fest does, so you have no reason not to enter. It's a pretty cool deal. One thing that Laramie and I always seem to talk about is masturbation. And I noticed that we didn't. So that's kind of weird. And he brought that up the next day. Hey, man, we didn't really, we didn't really talk about number one, you know? <laughs> so he sent me a link. This is the band Ice Cream off of the album Classically Trained. The song is called Jerk It Off. I want you guys to take care of each other. Take care of yourselves, and as always, follow the golden myself, honey, I jerk it off, independent man, I do what I can, and not treat myself right now, so I jerk it off, why does everything Don't need room.